This morning I'm going to show you um, how to do uh, the how to build the bone graph models uh, just on the using the physical system and basically laying the bone graph on the system. So you can recognize a one-to-one -one correspondence between the bone graph model and the physical system. So let's take a look at this electrical system that you see in there and begin. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is to put the one junction for each one of the um, <coughs> uh, currents here. So we put the one in here, uh, we put the one over here, this is the current I1 here and this would be the current I sub 2 and um, that's the first step. Second step is to uh, to to attach the elements that experience those currents. So on this one, obviously, this SE with value voltage here, this is attached to this. This one is an I element with value L. You know, assuming L is this, and R is here, and C is over here. This, on this one, we have C with value C, and that is that step. Um, the next step is that we um, we we establish the current differences. So we do that with a zero. So I1 minus I sub 2. You know, we can put a one junction here to indicate that, but I think we could also uh, simplify it a little bit. You know, this is, would be I1 minus I sub 2. Is this here and then this is the R element over there with value R. Okay let's practice the assignment of the causal marks also that's important um, you know that step is done by the software by CAMG but you need to know what CAMG does first we assign it to the source then to the I in integral form if this sets one flow into the one junction, makes this like that. And then um, we assign it to the C in integral form also. That requires that this would have a flowing like this. And that makes this zero over there for here, this to be like this. CAMG would do this and also would number this, so that's not a problem. So I think what we need to do is uh, we'll try a different uh, example, to, um, perhaps the, uh, hold on for a second. Um, I'm going to draw a different one now so that we can practice some more okay so let's just do this um, other example um, similar to this but with some variation that indicates a little bit more difficulty so in here we're going to put a C element over here and in here we'll put an R element here we will do a C element and then in the middle we'll put an inductor over here and then <coughs> we have this yeah, here okay let's give it a try again the same way so in here we go and with a different color I'll just use the one over here for the I1, another one, I sub 2 like this, and then 
attached to those currents. The elements that see this would be with value B. This other one would go with a C element with value C over here. This one in here is another C, like this with value C sub 2, let's say. If this is C sub 2, and this is C sub 1. And then this one would have an R element over here with value R sub 1. You see? And then we have to deal with what's in between, which is uh, this I element that sees the difference between this. You know, we create the difference between those two. This I element sees the difference, so we're going to put the I element over here with value, whatever it is, L over here. So that's my uh, bond graph model of this other circuit. And um, let's practice against the causal assignment to see if everything is OK. This one will be like this. We're going to put the um, Mm. <coughs> Let's see here we have this in integral form that makes this to be like this. And the moment we force this makes this zero, all of them to be like that. And if you put this C in integral form, you get the R this way. And the causal marks completes perfectly well. So that is one. Let's give it a try now to a different example uh, where I think we will experience a, a different challenge in here. And so we are going to draw a new uh, example here. I'll just use to be consistent with the colors that we're doing. Let's see if we, uh, if we have the same level of uh, difficulty or more but let's say we have a circuit where we have this kind of thing and then we have a element over here like this and you have this um, element down here would be like this and we have one that goes as an inductor like that. And then we have another one that goes like this. All right, we're going to apply the same procedure and let's see how we do with that. In here we go and put the one in here. We put the other one over here and this is I1, I sub 2, and I sub 3 in here. And this is the voltage source, which would be a source of effort with value V. This, uh, I think we're going to say R1, uh, R sub 2, and this is R sub 3. And then you have this would be C. So in here we go and put this as R in here with value R1. This other one also sees the um, current with value R sub 2. This R element sees this current here, R with value uh, R sub 3 and this other one would be a C element with value C and in between these two we learned that using a zero junction remember I originally told you just put a one for that and then you put the next element now we're simplifying it a little bit we know that this is I1 minus I sub 2 
and then you can directly put the i element in here with value l1 and this would be l sub 2 in here and then this other one you do it the same way and we will have the i element with value l sub 2 do you see now 101 correspondence with the physical system and so now you have this um, let's do the causal marks um, I would encourage you to uh, enter this one into the computer because here's here's what I'll well well you will see okay you put this over here as a um, effort to the source you put it here to the zero and nothing happens you put this one to the other zero and nothing happens and you put this in integral form for the C and nothing happens if you put this into the CAMG software it would do what I just did but it's going to show you red marks through all these loops in here which means that the, the equations of this system are much more complex because they have algebraic loops that need to be re resolved at this point um, um, we will not I will not give you to solve on your own those those kind of systems but I want you to know that if you connect things in a certain way you might not be able to solve them explicitly you need other mathematical techniques to solve this and a circuit that is as simple as this one um, you 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 have there's a problem right here um, if, if you enter it into the CAMG software, the causality will not complete. Has anybody done it? Yeah. I've done, I've done something like this and I've just been trying to get this causality. Um, so now you can see that um, in our system here, we have a situation where the causal marks don't complete for the whole system. You know, these are okay, these are okay, but these ones don't complete in here. In other words, this is a problem, this is a problem, and if you put it into CAMG, all this is going to be right. So, one way to solve this is to introduce a small element that could actually determine the the causality in here and usually on the ones if you if you do it i'm going to keep this color so you can see that it's a different if we add an i element over here a small i element you see what happens it determines the flow to the one and makes this ones like this you see and then um, this is determined here this one is determined here the zero needs an effort so it makes it like this see and that sets the flow to this one and that makes the other flows out like that and in here you have two flows to the zero needs an effort see and then in here you will you will have a flow and then this completes. Give it a try on your computer and see what you get. If we put an I element over here, we will fix the um, fact that the causality did not complete. Of course, it would be like a parasitic element and it will have to be a very small so that they won't uh, influence the system but it fixes the derivative form the derivative it fixes the algebra loops excuse me and the um, 
uh, com causality completes.